the number of satellites circling the Earth has skyrocketed in recent years. In 1959, there were just two satellites in orbit, but today there are well over 3,000. And that's just the beginning. Private companies are scrambling to conquer space at a rapid pace. SpaceX's Starlink project alone has permission to put 12,000 satellites into orbit. In 10 years' time, there could be at least 16,000 satellites in orbit, five times as many as today. The rush to space is driven by falling prices. 25 years ago, payload, payload cost per kilo was 22,000 euros. Today, it costs only 8,000 euros. And those prices are expected to keep falling to less than 100 euros per kilo. No wonder then that more and more companies are looking to the stars. Data from space will be key to unlocking new technical innovations in the future. Navigation, communication, Earth observation. More satellites are delivering ever more data, a huge market according to this startup in Berlin. We are convinced that every major industry will be affected during the next 10 years by satellite data. So to give a very precise example, what we can do with satellite data is, for example, monitor infrastructure grids all across the globe, but also monitor mines, monitor agricultural fields, monitor forests, and so on. So really, for every global question, there's an answer from space. Live EO evaluates satellite images with the help of artificial intelligence. German rail operator Deutsche Bahn is one of their customers. From orbit, it's possible to see where trees are growing too close to the tracks. It helps safety personnel do their job more efficiently. Data analysis can also be useful for monitoring power grids and pipelines. We have customers from Australia to Europe, uh, to the US, South America and so on. Uh, just at the beginning of this year, we've analyzed the entire US transmission network, nearly one million kilometers of overhead lines. Uh, so really there's no limitation to what satellite data can monitor in terms of scale uh, and nearly nothing in terms of scope. Satellites are getting smaller and cheaper. The company Astrofine has established itself as a supplier in the field. These reaction wheels can be used to steer satellites and align them with the sun. They're packed and released into orbit from boxes like these. The reason that small satellites are starting a revolution is because the barrier to entry is not that high anymore. If you build very large satellites that carry a lot of instruments, it costs a lot of money. But if you make the satellite smaller, miniaturize the components, take advantage of the increase in efficiency, then you can put something into orbit faster, with pocket-sized satellites that cost maybe 300,000 euros. And then you can launch your business model. The industry is on its way from the workshop to mass production. Giants weighing tons are turning into smart swarms that provide seamless data, the raw material of the future. And for more, I'm joined by Walter Pauser, who is an executive board member of the German Aerospace Center in Bonn. Welcome. First off, can there be too many satellites in space? I can imagine the risk of collusions, for example. Wouldn't that be bad? Yeah, good morning. First of all, thank you for having me. And you're absolutely right. It's kind, kind of crowded um, around, the, around the globe and um, the traffic becomes an issue. And this is a topic we have to handle um, with, with uh, agreements. Um, and we are working in uh, intergovernmental um, agreements uh, with the United Nations to come up with a solution for this topic. Now, you spoke of multilateral organizations like the United Nations, but the sp and the space sector was, of course, once dominated by public agencies. What do you make of the rise of new space startups and private companies getting in on the game? Yes, actually, the, the reason why, why we have this significant change and we, we monitor it um, and, and we, we uh, see it for, for quite some time now uh, are a few reasons. And in the, in the report, uh, uh, most of the reasons were just mentioned by miniaturization. Uh, it was mentioned that, that satellites become cheaper. And so it becomes cheaper to enter the business is much cheaper and the risk lowers. So you don't have to spend uh, millions for a satellite anymore. It's uh, just a question of a few hundred thousand euros uh, or dollars. Uh, 
and uh, launch costs are getting lower as well due to the fact that the satellites are lighter, the, the cost for launch is getting getting easier. But this is only one, one part why we have this change to so-called new space. Actually, the, the initial, from my point of view, the, the initial uh, uh, the ignition of the new space was that NASA changed its purchasing process, that uh, they changed the way how agencies um, are on the market. Um, up to now, and this is something we in Europe have to, uh, to do um, as well, at least from my point of view, is that agencies in the past actually said exactly what they want to have and they gave an order. And uh, NASA changed this process a little bit that they ask now for a service. So they create a market, they say, okay, we are willing to buy some kind of service, for example, some, some launch service for so many millions or billions and now it's up to the private market to come up with offers. So everybody can actually step in and to say, yeah, okay, we can, we can offer you um, a solution for the, the question you have, for the service you are asking for. Mm -hmm. And this is a completely change in the process. So it sounds like you are for Europe opening up more to, uh, private, uh, to private companies. How is Europe doing as a competitor in the space race relative, say, to um, the US or China? Well, to be honest, I think we are um, maybe not in the first row, but we are, we are catching up. Um, as I just mentioned, um, so the European space um, agencies on the one hand side, but also the, the European um, industry has to adapt to this new process, uh, to this new process. So, and uh, this is on the one hand side. On the second uh, part, which is actually making this um, transformation a little bit more difficult, is that the size of the market in the US is so much bigger. It's the same in China. In in US, we see more than 40 launches per year. Of course, the payloads um, with more than 40 payloads or actually a, a few times as much as, as 40 launches. Um, the same in, in China. And in, in uh, Europe, we have uh, not, not even five institutional uh, launches per year. So the market size is much smaller. So the right. willingness to invest in a much smaller market is uh, on a lower level. And this is something we have to develop. Walter Pelzer is an executive board member of the German Aerospace Center in Bonn. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.